Hello, hello, more dimmers here and welcome to another game from Tata Steel Chess Tournament in Vegancy 2020. Today, believe me or not, but I'm gonna cover the game of... Yes, Jordan Van Forest. And um, there is the reason for that. He played white again and his last games he won twice as white. He had a phenomenal um, opening preparation, so he did very, very well. And also he gonna play today against world champion Magnus Carlsen. So Magnus Carlsen 2872, that's his ranking. And Van Forest playing white with ranking 2644. A huge difference um, in rankings. Let's see how they gonna do. Warm welcome for both of the players. But I would like to tell you a couple of interesting facts. Uh, first, Magnus Carlsen in this game, he tried to get the longest unbeaten streak. And so far he won 36 games and uh, draw 74 and it gives him 110 games of unbeaten streak. Uh, but that's the same number what has uh, Sergei Tivyakov and Bogdan Lalic. Now, interesting thing, Sergei Tivyakov was a coach of um, Van Forest. So Jordan had the coach who had the... Uh, uh, longest uh, unbeaten streak so far and now Magnus and he play against Magnus Carlsen who tried to beat that record so it's a lot of uh, connections in, in chess um, a very interesting story and also uh, I didn't tell you yet uh, you know you know that he's 20 years old Jordan is uh, 20 years old very young a uh, Netherlands um, chess um, player grandmaster and he is from very old uh, aristocratic family from 13th century so um you know that's a family with tradition but interesting thing is that his great great grandfather arnold von forest and great great grand uncle dirk van forest both of them were three times uh uh, national masters of Netherlands, the the, the national uh, champions of Netherlands, they won, you know, the, the championship uh, three times. Uh, that was in 19th century. So this is definitely family with the chess tradition. Uh, he didn't, you know, just nobody found him in the cabbage. He, he was just born in family with the strong chess tradition. Uh, his father showed him the game when he was uh, six and then he started to play regularly when he was nine. So that's being said, let's jump into the game. Van Forest open with e4. So uh, in the first two games uh, he won uh, against Sicilian. Uh, Magnus Carlsen is a Sicilian expert, but in this game he play e5. Quite interesting. Knight f3, knight c6. And Van Forest didn't go for the most popular Rui Lopez. He went for bishop on c4 and started the uh, Italian game. And as you see in this tournament, couple of games were played in this system. So uh, it's, it's one of the oldest opening. Uh, very interesting that it's still popular. Knight f6. So we have two knight defense by Carlsen. And now we have knight g5. So uh, this is quite interesting. It's possible some fright uh, lever attack um, motives. But also it's interesting that Magnus Carlsen could play in this moment bishop on c5 and it's very famous Traxler counter-attack and it's very very sharp uh, and for example if a knight takes on f7 with forking the queen and the, and the rook black plays bishop takes on f2 check and it's so crazy opening both sides very sharp both sides has a chances and and that would be really awesome if the players play and uh, now um, usually nowadays white play bishop takes on f7 so they avoid uh, most of the complication but um, in, in end of 20th century Alexander Bielawski played this opening uh, against uh, 
against the many players like Anatoly Karpov or uh, Vishwanathan Anand. And uh, for example, um, in this game, King e7 was played. Uh, just give you the example, Bishop d5, Queen e8, uh, with some ideas, uh, you know, to get the, the Queen on the h file. We would have d3, d6, Bishop takes on c6, b takes on c6, bishop e3, so countering this uh, this uh, dangerous bishop, queen g6, and uh, knight goes back on f3, and believe me or not, but Aleksander Bielawski uh, won that game with Anand, and that was when Anand was on his peak of his career, 1991, so he was just, you know, two years before he won Wagen Z uh, tournament for the first time, uh, really, really incredible stuff. So with uh, Traxler, you can win against world, world champion. Now, Alexander Bielawski is known as one of the three guys in the chess history who beaten nine, nine world champions. That's the, uh, you know, uh, he, he defeated Smyslov, Tal, Petrosian, Spassky, Karpov, Kasparov, Kramnik, Anand in this game, and Carlsen. So this guy was, you know, insane. He was one of the strongest players and every world champion actually, you know, was worrying what's, what's gonna happen. And he, as you see, play crazy stuff like Traxler, for example. But in this game, of course, world champion play d5 so he played the most popular line and we have e takes on d5 knight goes on a5 bishop b5 check uh, c6 b takes on c6 b takes on c6 and bishop retreat to not e2 but d3 and d3 uh, was played uh, for the first time on the high level by alexander uh, morozevich and uh, Morozevich is known uh, to try to play um, unorthodox uh, things uh, with some complications, especially uh, in the openings which are uh, not known. The most famous uh, is uh, Chigorin defense um, by Morozevich, but, but he play um, uh, also many, many different system which are not, you know, the main lines and, and trying to exploit that um, against uh, much stronger opponents. So here we have against uh, Magnus Carlsen, Bishop D3, Jordan also plays. And as you see, uh, in this tournament, he has a really good um, preparation. Uh, Magnus uh, go with his uh, knight on d5. So now we have attack on the uh, on the knight. So knight retreat on f3, and we have bishop on d6, defending this uh, pawn because pawn is um, attacked now. And we have knight on c3. Uh, we have castle by Carlsen and bishop e2. So in this position, the most natural move would be f5, and uh, after d3, uh, black would play uh, queen c7 and maybe, and maybe attack on the e line. But in this position, Carlsen play knight f4, and knight f4 with idea to exchanging the the knight for the bishop and you know get the uh, bishop pair as an advantage as you see carlsen is down the pawn so uh, he has to be really really active uh, and also attacking the pawn on g2 so we have castle by jordan van forest and now we have a bishop on g4 we have d3 Na uh, and attacking this um, this knight, so uh, knight can be exchanged, but uh, this is Carlsen who decide uh, what to exchange, and he wants to exchange for the light square bishop, so a knight takes on e2, uh, queen takes on e2, and only now we have f5, and here h3, which is known move, um, bishop is challenged, so has to move or um, exchange for the for the knight, but as I said, Carlsen decided to uh, keep the pair of bishop as an advantage. 
And now this is something, um, something uh, new move, G4. And G4, um, I haven't found the uh, games uh, played before. Very interesting move, um, but played very fast by um, Jordan. So that's still uh, his preparation. And we have F takes on G4. And in this position, of course, uh, this um, pawn cannot be taken um, because of this um, problematic <laughs> pin where the knight is attacked twice and actually can't be defended. So uh, that would be really bad. So, of course, Jordan didn't play this uh, move. He played a uh, knight on g5. And... Uh, Knight on g5, we have a threat, so forking the queen and the rook, and we have queen on d7. And knight c on e4, uh, attacking the bishop, but b bishop just simply go to um, e7, so cannot be taken. And, and now we have knight on g3, so Van Forest try to, you know, exchange the knights for the bishop. Bishop g6, uh, Carlsen, of course, is not interested. And now we have um, white can, you know, can choose to take this uh, pawn or this pawn. Uh, interesting line after taking um, the pawn um, inside, but too complicated. Uh, so Van Forest just plays solid queen on g4. Uh, Carlsen exchanged the queens on g4, so we have um, pawn on, takes on g4. And now we have c5. From fifth rank, uh, knight going to uh, e4. Now we have knight c6, so bringing the knight to the center uh, because this knight, you know, it's not too active. Uh, so we have bishop on e3, attacking the pawn. Uh, Carlsen answer with knight on d4. We have rook a on c1 because the pawn on c2 was attacked we have rook on c from a to c8 and we have king g2 and here carlsen attack um, with support of the rook attacked to c4 uh, jordan van forest uh, first exchanged uh, his second bishop for the knight in the center as this knight was uh, quite dangerous on this outpost we have e takes on d4 f3 strengthening the position of of this knight um, on e4 and now we have rook on c6 so uh, probably uh, magnus carlsen want to double the rooks or maybe also uh, play on the sixth rank so um, let's see what happened we have b3 and this move is weakening the pawn structures on the queen side, and it's even invitation for um, for this bishop. And Magnus Carlsen indeed play bishop on a3. And in this position, believe me or not, but uh, Jordan Van Forest uh, was thinking if this is good to take um, uh, from d to c4. And he was calculating and he was not sure if his position gonna be um, better or not. And um, you can listen to, to that story in the interview with um, Jordan Van Forest. There is the link, so click the link here and you can you can listen um, by Jordan Van Forest yourself. And uh, yeah, he's explaining why he didn't uh, go for that. Uh, but what would happen if he decide that, that is the exchange sacrifice, um, we would have this situation. And as you remember from first two games, uh, Jordan Van Forest won the games by storming the, the pawns on the queen side. And here he would have the three pawns against one pawn uh, it would be very, very hard for Magnus to draw that. So that was a very big chance. Uh, instead, um, Jordan play rook c to e1. So uh, the chance is gone. We have c on d3, c on d3, and we have a5 by Magnus Carlsen. We have rook on f2. So um, rook on f2 actually uh, guards the second rank as it always can be infiltrated by by black. Uh, however, it's also weakened uh, the first rank. And 
it's important because Magnus Carlsen um, play bishop c1 so as you see now this bishop uh, can enter the game can get to the strong outpost on e3 and it can be pretty annoying on this diagonal uh, so this is one diagonal this is another diagonal uh, controlled by um, bishops and now if Magnus managed to get the past pawn, uh, it can be quite dangerous. And here Jordan Van Forest has to be really, really careful. As you heard in the interview, uh, his position was much better. And, um, and now he has to, you know, fight for a draw. And um, it's not like, you know, it's, it's, it's losing or something, but position is so complex and there are so many ways to lose that game that he has to be extremely careful especially Magnus Carlsen in this position still have more than one hour on the clock and um, Jordan has only 26 minutes and still nine nine moves to make so um, it's very easy to you know make some uh, mistake and lose the game uh, even after so so good opening uh, so, for example, if Jordan uh, plays some natural move like, uh, you know, uh, rook on um, e2 to double the rooks, Carlsen would play uh, h6, uh, making a room for the king, but also preventing um, from activity from this knight. Uh, knight f2, defending the pawn on d3, but bishop e3, very annoying move, uh, attacking this knight, Rook d1, so another defender to uh, pawn d3, but after rook c on f6, uh, white wouldn't defend the, the pawn on f3. So this way or another, uh, Magnus Carlsen would manage to, you know, get his pawn back and have probably much more active position. So um, Jordan has to be really, really careful. And he play knight on d2. We have bishop takes on d3. So Magnus uh, managed to get um, the pass pawn. Knight on c4. We have bishop on f4. Knight on e5, forking the rook and the bishop. Uh, so a rook has to move and uh, protect the bishop. Uh, Van Forest exchange this knight for the bishop, so uh, takes on d3, rook take on d3, knight f5, g6, trying to kick the knight, but Van Forest answer uh, rook on e4. Uh, so Carlsen has to move the bishop because it's, you know, um, double attack on the bishop and on the pawn also. Uh, so a uh, bishop on g5 first and here Van Forest could just take on d4. He didn't do that, but he could uh, because even uh, Carlsen do, um, you know, this double attack on the rook and the, and the knight. Uh, Jordan would have the answer a knight on e6 with attack on the rook. So bishop takes on f2, knight takes on f8. Uh, rook d2 and it looks really really um, uh, dangerous but uh, knight just go on e6 and as you see uh, black could do some discovery but white very smart would have all the uh, pieces and all the pawns on the light square so there is no good discovery in this position black would just take on a2 uh, king h3 and the game would continue uh, with pretty equal chances, actually, you know, uh, three pawns against three pawns. Uh, very, very drawish position. Uh, so that would be the, the easiest way just to go to draw. Uh, but not much time on the clock. Um, Van Forest play knight on e7 check. We have king h8 by um, Carlsen. Knight c6 attacking this pawn um, again. Bishop e3, so defending this pawn and also attacking the rook. Rook e2, rook d1, now creating some um, very dangerous, it looks like very dangerous uh, moves on g1 with check, kicking the, the king, but actually mm, there is nothing here. Uh, Van Forest just took on a Rook g1, we have rook g1 check, king h2, moving the uh, king, 
and now we have rook back on c1 so preventing this knight uh, from attacking back the the d pawn uh, and also uh, this rook attacks the f3 pawn so we have king g2 defending rook g1 king h2 rook c1 king g2 and it was in this position that um magnus carlsen uh, agreed to um, withdraw uh, jordan van forest got half point uh, magnus carlsen also got half point new world record longest unbeaten streak 111 games by magnus carlsen so that's the achievement um, uh, for sure uh, very impressive stuff here uh, Jordan Van Forest had his chances uh, but just a draw against the world champion so this is something and would some there, there are some other ideas is it draw or players could play you know more first of all it's 45th moves and um, Jordan Van Forest has 42 minutes um, on his clock and uh, Magnus Carlsen still has one hour and 40 minutes. So big advantage in time. So probably risking uh, wouldn't be the best idea, but actually wouldn't be good idea for both of them. If in this position, uh, for example, Magnus Carlsen decide to play D3, he would lose the bishop on e3 first and then d2 rook on d4 uh, promoting to queen uh, killing the queen on d1 uh, rook takes on d1 and uh, magnus carlsen would have some troubles because uh, yes he has two rooks he is up the exchange um, but he would have to defend against um, this uh, connected past pawns um uh, would be difficult uh, so he didn't want to you know risk that um, and also in this position if uh, jordan try for example knight on c4 we would have bishop on f4 with check uh, king g2 d3 attack uh, a bit later and now after rook on f2 there is actually nothing to, to do. This this is very difficult to push that pawn. Uh, for example, rook on c2, rook d4, so attacking from the behind. Black couldn't go uh, on d, d8 because this bishop was hanging. So uh, rook on d4, rook c3 defending, uh, rook d7 cutting the king. And, and this is... Um, also really unclear how to how to advance with these pawns Th these pawns actually can be uh, attacked by carlsen um, quite easily uh, so in this position just um, both players um, agreed for a draw so it's a bit longer than i expected but at least i hope you enjoyed the stories and you know more about the young um, netherlands uh, grandmaster and uh, also uh, congratulations to Magnus Carlsen for a new world record in the longest unbeaten streak. And if you would like to hear from Magnus Carlsen, uh, there is an interview with him, link, link over there. So click, uh, listen to Magnus, what he said about this game, how he was, you know, worse um, after the opening and also uh, what he said about his unbeaten streak. So um, pretty interesting stuff. I hope you enjoyed that and um, see you in the next one.